Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. Uh, I'm Mark Noakes, author of Modern Guitar Method, and today I want to talk to you about guitar pedals. Uh, more specifically, the chain of, of pedals, um, basically the way that you combine pedals and in what order uh, you might consider putting them in uh, to achieve uh, certain, certain effects and certain sounds. So, there are a lot of pedals out there. Uh, I'm sure some of you already have many, but you know, you've got um, EQ pedals, loop pedals, talk boxes, tuners, compression, tremolo, distortion, wah, vibrato, chorus, flange, uh, phaser, delay, reverb, uh, so many different types of pedals. Um, and, um, and they're all going to produce different results uh, based on the order that they're in. So um, I'm going to show you a picture of my pedal board real quick, um, and then I'll talk a little bit about the way I've set that up and, and why. All right, here's my pedal board and the pedals that I tend to like the best uh, for, for me and for the sound uh, that I'm going for. This pedal board is a Furman uh, SPB-8C. That's the model. And, uh, you know, I really like this pedal board. It, I've had it for a long time. Um, the only thing I did was I took, I took the, uh, the Velcro board off um, because it's just held down with uh, screws. And I bought a piece of plexiglass and I cut that to size and I put my own industrial strength Velcro down onto it. And that, that has been really terrific. The Velcro that came with it just wasn't strong enough to keep my pedals secure. Um, but this pedal board does have a cover that just snaps down. Uh, it's pretty cool. So I like it. All your power and everything is just right up there. You also have an effects uh, send and everything here, which is very good. Um, I do use that sometimes to plug in my, I've got uh, over here, I've got my lexicon reverb. Sometimes I'll take that out to a gig and just patch that into the effects loop there in the pedal board. It's pretty cool. Um, so a lot of features uh, with that. You've also got a nice power conditioner at the top, you know, Furman power conditioner, so it's excellent. Uh, so on to the pedals. So right now I just, I don't have it going through the effects loop, but I have it so that I can um, just plug in my instrument cable uh, into the first item in the chain. And then the last item there just goes out to my amp. Um, so the first thing I have in the chain is a tuner. And that connects to my compressor, which comes over to my wah pedal, to an overdrive uh, preamp pedal, then to a distortion pedal. Then up here, we're going into a uh, octave pedal. This does a sub octave and an oct octave up. It's pretty cool. Uh, then we have, let's see, um, I did this. I did this out of order, actually. The uh, the distortion. Let's see. We've got the preamp going into the um, octave pedal into the distortion, um, then over into the flange, up to the delay, and then over to a looper. So. Uh, let me talk a little bit about why I've set things up this way. So what I like to do is be sure that my my guitar signal um, goes through any type of, let's just say, neutral items first. So in this case, that's a tuner, totally just a neutral thing. It just mutes the output when I'm tuning. Um, and then it goes into the compressor because I want my finished sound um, to be compressed, but I don't want my effects 
to be compressed, okay? So I want to add the compression after, um, or I'm sorry, I want to add my effects after my compression. So I'm just, I'm compressing that, that natural, um, unaffected guitar sound and then going through my effects and layering on top of that. So then wah is another um, effect that I would consider sort of a neutral, um, it's not really layering a lot of um, signal, you know, on top. It's just, it's affecting the signal, but again, we're compressing it, then we're going into the wah. And then if you think about it, you know, if you put your wah um, after your other effects, like flange and delay and things like that, that signal is going to be wad, for lack of a better, for lack of a better term. And you might like that. You might like that. You know, you have to experiment with what you prefer. And in this case, I just happen to prefer, you know, my compressed sound first going into my wah. Then I want basically my distortion and my octave uh, stuff happening. So um, I, I really feel like those could go in either order um, without much of a difference in sound. Um, this pedal in particular has a, has a volume uh, booster and a distortion built in. And if you look in the middle, there's a switch and you get to choose which one you want first. So you can put the distortion through the, um, through the booster or the booster through the distortion. So whatever you prefer. Um, I have it set to go booster um, into distortion. That way, if I'm playing a lead, uh, I can add that booster kind of overdrive and it'll just, it'll just beef up that lead um, in a big way. Um, so then I come over here to my, my other types of effects, like chorus, flange, delay. So this is a choral flange, which is a chorus pedal and a flange pedal, it's two in one, uh, just operated by a switch. Uh, and then I come up into my delay and then into my loop pedal. And the loop pedal is at the very end because whatever I play, um, I want the ability to loop that sound, right? And so if the loop pedal is anywhere um, before any of these other signal modifiers, uh, that signal won't be um, changed, any, anything after the loop pedal, right? So um, it's important to think about those things and um, just kind of experiment and set it up um, how you like it. So that's just a, an example of how I like to set up my pedal board. Um, you know, you might have different tastes and preferences. Um, certain things are just going to sound weird, um, and you'll just have to try them. Uh, but, you know, until you do, you won't know. So, you know, grab your pedals, get some patch cables, and patch them together. Um, that's one thing I wanted to mention too a little bit is about patch cables. There are a lot of different types on the market. I use these little guys here, uh, George L cables. They look a little different nowadays. Uh, you can still buy these. I've just had them for a long time. Um, but these cables are really cool. This is a little screw end. And basically you just buy lengths of this, this cable, cut it to whatever length you you need uh, with a really sharp uh, cutting tool. I just use a razor blade and put it on a flat surface and it goes right through it. Um, and then you just push the cable into the uh, the end, the plug end, and then screw the back on. And you can get these in 90 degree plug style or uh, straight ends. Um, I think they have a really terrific uh, clarity of sound. Um, as far as uh, as far as patch cables go, you know I think they're they're pretty top notch. Um, for my instrument cables, I use the uh, the Megami Platinum, so with the silent plug. Um, you know they're a little spendy, but um, this cable 
uh, I just picked up the other day. I just exchanged uh, because I had one of these for about nine years, I want to say, uh, maybe longer. I, I honestly can't even remember when I bought it. And I used it gig after gig after gig, and um, and it just finally kind of kind of gave out on me, and I went and I was able to just exchange it. They have a lifetime guarantee, so um, they're really terrific uh, instrument cables, very transparent and clear. Uh, and if you if you care about really getting the best tone uh, out of your instrument and into your amplifier or your recording equipment. You gotta have that that transparent signal. So I highly recommend the Megami Platinum uh, instrument cables. I highly recommend the Georgel patch cables. And uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. I have more content to come. I hope you watched my um, my silly uh, video. Uh, the, the title started with "Pandemic Got You Down." Um, I hope you got a kick out of that. I had a lot of fun making that, and I, I plan to do some more, um, you know, like goofy, fake commercial. Uh, I've got ideas for that kind of junk, um, and I, I can't wait to make some of that. So um, I might even get some friends to help me. Uh, but anyway, please subscribe, and thanks, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.